Welcome to another episode of Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin and today we are in India. In this episode we are exploring the city of Varanasi, the holiest city here in India and one of the oldest inhabited cities in the entire world. Everything we eat here in Varanasi is going to be pure veg. This is a food lover's paradise and we woke up bright and early to take a little cruise on the holy Ganga River, the Ganges, one of the holiest places in the entire world right at the ghats of the city of Varanasi. I'm so excited to be here. I've been looking forward to coming here my entire life. So let's enjoy this boat ride and then we'll get some breakfast. to start the morning I definitely recommend waking up for the sunrise so you can take a cruise on the river Ganges when you're here in Varanasi that was only 250 so do a little bit of bargaining we went for about an hour so pretty good deal so this city is said to be over 3,000 years old the layout is quite unique. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. There's all these twisting and turning back alleyways, but it is a really nice change because the rickshaws and cars can't get back in here. So the honking is not so present. You can kind of hear it off in the distance, but that's a nice change from all the big cities that we've been visiting so far in India. Since this is an ancient city, the wiring isn't so good here. In fact, this might be the worst wiring situation I've ever seen, but somehow how in all of its chaos it works. We are at our first stop. This place is called the Ram Bandar, completely packed out with locals. They are serving a couple different things. One is the jalebi, which is a traditional Indian sweet. He uses this cheesecloth with a semolina dough inside and kind of makes these little swirly, twisty donut type things that he's deep frying and then he dumps them in a huge bucket of syrup, sugar syrup mixed with some spices and then he'll let that kind of braise in the sugar for a little bit. They also have kachori that they serve with chana masala, chickpeas, which we're gonna order up for breakfast first. Try both these two items that they are super famous for here. So this is breakfast today. We've got a beautiful bowl of chana masala. There are some chickpeas in there. There's some potatoes. There's something called kushka, which is a milk solid, and then it's just covered in this curry and a bit of mint chutney on top. And then underneath here, we have the kachori, which are actually very similar to puri because they're a thin type of kachori. And one of my favorite things here is that they serve it in this really cool leaf bowl. And it's totally biodegradable, totally sustainable. I just think that's a really good thing. So let's dig into this. All right, let's dig in, get a big serving. This is a very classic Varanasi breakfast. Oh, that looks great. So that is quite spicy. I think it's the chutney on top. There's a lot of green chilies in there, soft potatoes, and then that puri is actually a little bit crispy. It is so crazy here. We've got a friend coming to join us.
We've been eating a lot of chana here in India. A lot of dishes are very similar, but what they say here in India is every 50 kilometers you move, the flavors completely change. And that's true here in Varanasi. There's those kushka inside of this chana, which is a little bit of a sweet milk solid. And then the bread's a little bit crispier and harder than before. And I also noticed that in that sauce, in that chutney, there are some tamarind. There's a little bit of tamarind. So it gives it a sourness, which you definitely uh, didn't find in other parts of the country when we were trying chana. This one's quite good. This is the jalebi. It looks like a golden pretzel a little bit, and it is just covered in sugar. It's almost hard on the outside, but I think it's going to be nice and soft on the inside. Mm. Did you hear that crunch? Mm. Oh my gosh. You know, this one actually tastes a little bit like sweet popcorn, but when it melts in your mouth, it's almost like cotton candy. It's so good. Good little breakfast. That's pure veg. That's all you're gonna find here in Varanasi. Simple but delicious and really popular with the locals. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. That was really yummy. <laughs> So we just spotted this guy on the side of the road selling malayo, which is a winter only dish. It's a dish of saffron milk that is left overnight to settle. When the dew settles, it is finished and it is this big pot of yellow, milky, frothy, bubbly, delicious looking dessert. We just ordered one up. This looks so good. Check this out. This is the malayo. Look at the texture of that. I don't know if you can tell, uh, but it's got this weird kind of foam, bubbly texture, almost like micro bubbles. Um, I don't really know what to compare it to. I've never had a dish that is quite as foamy as this. And you can see it's just bright yellow with all that saffron. There's some pistachios, coconut, almonds, some spices on top there, and there's some sugar mixed in as well. Let me try it. Wow. Oh, wow. That is awesome. The texture of that just completely disintegrates in your mouth instantly. You can't even feel it. You can definitely taste that saffron. It's got a little bit of a floral flavor and then all of that nuttiness and a little bit sweet. That takes the word airy to another level. This is like nothing. Mm. You could like inhale this stuff. Here, get some of this. Crazy texture, right? Yeah, there's gotta be like a million bubbles in there. Yeah. It's almost like if you were going to eat shaving cream that was delicious. Yeah, or like shampoo. <laughs> yeah. So when you're finished <laughs> off with your malayo, you can actually go over to this guy here and he'll fill you up with some saffron milk. Thank you. All right, let me give this a sip. Mm. Oh, that is nice and cold. Oh, super refreshing. Same flavor though. That was the perfect sweet. If you are really full or you're watching your weight, then that's a good dessert for you because it literally feels like you ate nothing at all. It's so light and airy. We're gonna keep going. There's so many things to try here in Varanasi. So what do you think so far of this city? This city is incredible. I don't know my way around and I don't think it's possible to use a map to get around. You just kind of have to know the city and uh, I love that feeling when you're walking around just being absolutely lost. It really helps to ask people where you're going if you don't know where you're going because only the locals really know their way around here. And the only place that this reminds me of are other ancient cities we visited like Jerusalem, like Fez in Morocco. The old Medinas in Morocco are quite similar. It's just twisting alleyways, really confusing. So 
we're at the famous Blue Lassie shop, one of the most popular shops here in Varanasi with foreign tourists especially. It's been recommended by Lonely Planet all kinds of different places and he's got an extensive menu of Lassies which is the curd, yogurt, sweet uh, Indian drink. So we ordered up a couple different kinds, we're going to all try one and see how they taste. So I have my pomegranate banana lassi. This place is really popular mostly with just foreigners though to be honest. You can see he's sprinkled lots of pistachios on top, some pomegranates, and then little slices of banana. And he actually mixed the pomegranate into the lassi itself. So let me get some of these toppings, some of the lassi, and try it all together. Oh man, look at that. It's pretty good. I love the crunchy pomegranate. Tastes nice with the banana too. It's almost like strawberry banana, but pomegranate banana. And then crunchy pistachios. The lassi is really sweet though. Too sweet to be honest. All right, the taste test time for me now. Uh, so what? So my lassi has uh, a little bit of papaya, pineapple, and a very very thick lassi that you can see. So let's try this. I'm very excited. <laughs> You can feel the fire, you can feel the pineapple, the thick curd, I think it tastes amazing. Last but not least, this is the final lassi. This is apple with pistachio sprinkled on top, a little bit of saffron milk, and that thick, thick lassi. So, let's give it a taste with some of that apple on top. <laughs> The apple in there, it almost tastes like it's pickled. It's very, very sour. And the pistachios add a little bit of texture to that creamy lassi. And everything else underneath is just extremely sweet and fluffy. It is like heaven. Finish off with our lassies. That was pretty good. Definitely not the most authentic shop. And I found that mine was really, really sweet. How about yours? Mine was okay. The apple made it quite sour, so it kind of tasted more like a normal lassie. Yeah, a little bit too much sugar in mine, but pretty cool shop and really pretty lassies. So Varanasi is definitely an intense place. One thing I just want to say that I'm not going to be filming, but I wanted to point out, is that they have funeral processions that go through the small streets here and they are carrying the bodies not in a casket just covered with blankets and also there is a whole gat here that is dedicated to cremation so it's wide out in the open you can see it i'm not going to be filming that but it's believed in hinduism that if you're cremated and then your ashes are put into the Ganges, you can go on to the afterlife. So that is why this is happening here. That's why the Ganges is such a holy river. And we're just gonna go down and check out the ghats and check out the river now. Check out this little shop right here. There are tons of places like this in Varanasi. Really, that is the definition of a hole in the wall. Sitting down here on the ghats is taking people watching to the next level. Everything you see down here, all the street life, all the people bathing, all the boats going by, people flying kites, animals, lots of colorful outfits. It's quite a sight to behold. You could sit down here all day and just people watch. Really, this is like the ultimate people watching destination. It kind of reminds us of Venice, but almost like Venice on crack because it's crazy here, super busy, and the waterways are just packed full of boats too. But it is beautiful, and it is probably the most peaceful place we've been in India. Yes, definitely. No honking. It's a nice place to relax in the sun. 
There are a ton of touts that may kind of spoil your scenic walk along the ghats here in Varanasi. Just ignore them or say no politely and they should leave you alone. So I think we're done exploring the ghats here. We're going to head to another place to have some famous chats. So this is the special chat bandar that we were looking for. They are serving all different kinds of chats. Here in India, chat basically defines anything that's fried and served on a small plate, almost like a tapa. And they are seriously pumping out these chats here. There is about one, two, three, four, five guys making chats all in a very small area. They have all the different ingredients laid out. They're famous for their tomato chat. They also have aloo tiki that they're really famous for, their potato chat. And I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna order yet. We're just checking out the whole process of all of these different things and it is crazy. This place is insanely psycho. We we're trying to get all of our shots and there's no room to move. Sabrina is standing on a table or something and there's just so many people here. Wow, it is crazy. I gotta say I'm super thankful to have Gaurav SWAT official here with us. Check out his YouTube channel down below because otherwise without him, I don't know how I would get to the front to order there. But we've got our tomato chat. This is what this chat bandar is famous for. You can see there's so many things in here. He loaded it full of different ingredients. There's a tomato puree, there's all kinds of desi ghee, there's some peas, there's some crunchy bits, fresh coriander, I think there's onions in there, and there's definitely some lentils as well. So I'm just gonna go in for a huge bite here, served in the clay pot with a little um, wooden spoon. Mm. Wow, that is crazy. That's like concentrated tomato. Super tart, super sour. There's a little bit of a spice going on in there for sure. But wow, that's not like anything else we've tasted here in India. That caught me off guard. I kind of thought it was gonna taste like dal, like lentils, but it really doesn't. It's got a very strong tomato flavor. Jeez, it's almost like ketchup. Our next chat has arrived. This is called Chura Matar. Chura is puffed rice and the matar is the peas. So basically it's just rice and peas, but of course not. We're in India, so there's tons more ingredients. There are cashew nuts, there are uh, dried fruits, like little raisins and grapes hiding in there. Tons of fresh coriander, these little crispies on top. There's cumin, tomatoes, yeah, you name it. It's pretty much in here. This looks really interesting, completely different than the last. So let me try this. Mm. Oh yeah. Taste it with a little cashew. It is so much different than the last one. Wow, this is such a fresh flavor. It's almost like grassy and earthy. Hey Gaurav, how do you actually order here? Oh my god, I don't know. You have to have contacts. Like I told you, Jugaad. Last but not least, this is the Palak Bata Chat, which is a fritter made of spinach that has been dipped in gram flour and deep fried to perfection, covered in masala spices and curd, as well as pomegranates, coriander, and a ton of radish there on the side. It looks incredible. Let me go in for the first bite. I'm gonna go in from this side. I don't even know how you're supposed to go in and eat this, but let's give it a try. Oh, this is gonna not be very pretty. <laughs> okay, that was very messy, but for one, extremely, extremely crispy. You can't even taste the spinach 
in that. It doesn't taste like any vegetable, just like crispy deep fried. And then all that curd on there is quite sweet. And then the coriander adds a little fresh kick to it. And of course, try a little bit of pomegranate seed. Mm. It just pops with fruit and citrus. It's delicious. Those chats were really good. Here in Varanasi, chats are particularly famous. We only tried three, but I think that this stall serves hundreds more. I'd have to give it up for the tomato chat. It was invented at this place, Kashi Chat Bandar, so that was definitely my favorite. Tomorrow, I think we're gonna be trying a couple more chats, but there's something around the corner that Gaurav has told me. There is something that I'm surprising you with, and I'm sure you haven't seen that ever in your life. All right. Come, let's explore. Let's go see. Oh. So Gaurav has taken us to this kind of roadside factory where this guy is producing a lot of different milk products. So behind me here, he's just stirring some milk, which he'll turn into rabri, which is sort of like a sweet cream you have with dessert. He's also making fresh cream. Um, anything else? Yes, so he uh, sells hot milk also in okay. winters. And in summers, he sells lassi. He's very famous. You wow. have to try all the three things. The malai, the rabri, and the milk. All right, let's try them. So he just took some of the hot milk and started pulling it or frothing it up using these two big jugs and exchanging it between the two of them and it wasn't a simple process. He was uh, reaching well over his head. I don't know how far that stream of milk was going but I'd say at least four or five feet and now he served it to me in this little clay cup. He put a little bit of the malai on top which is the clotted cream, some of the frothy milk too and then it's just hot milk underneath with a little bit of sugar. Let me try this. Oh man, that is lovely. It's like a cappuccino without the coffee flavor. Super frothy on top, a little bit sweet, and all those chunks of malai or clotted cream in there, really good. Oh, I love that. So we've got his other two specialties. The first one is the malai, the cream. It's covered with a ton of sugar, and it's pretty simple. It's just the uh, top cream. And then the second one is this. This is the rabri, right? This is the rabri, and uh, it's topped with the cream. But this is a very special cream, not the one that you have in your hand. So this cream uh, is takes a long, longer time than this one. Okay. And this is 950 rupees a kg. Okay. And the one you're holding in your hand is 550 rupees a kg. Okay, wow. So you can make sure how, how hard it, it is to make this one. Yeah. And, and then, so why is it brown? So we have the rubbery because uh, you see the milk. Uh, so they take a lot of milk, at least 50 kg of milk together. Okay. And then they reduce it to about 15 kg. Yeah, yeah, you can see right here. Yeah. It's, out, it's starting to turn brown yeah. actually as we talk. We've only been here for a few minutes and yeah. it's starting yeah. to reduce. So it takes one hour for for them to make the rubbery and it takes them two hours to make them the, make the cream. All right, let me try start with this cream. Oh yeah, that's so good. It's just clotted cream. It's very reminiscent of Kaimak in Turkey and also of all the cream we have when we were in Mongolia. Crunchy bits of sugar. I want you to try the yeah, rubbery. I gotta also. try this rubbery. Try it, try it with that special malai. With the special malai, yeah. The special cream. All right. Oh. Oh yeah. Take the take whole thing. All, all right. right. Take that all in. Wow. It's crazy what you can do with the same ingredient, just buffalo milk, but cooking it into a different process. That does not taste like this at all. Yes. If I was blindfolded, I would never guess that these are the same thing. Yes. It's very rich. Very. It's definitely a lot more sweet. 
and then that cream was almost like chewy, which is not like this, this is very soft. I just wanna stress again that all of those different dishes we just tried come from the same thing, just buffalo milk. There is sugar added to taste, but the difference in textures and even flavors is totally made just from the cooking process alone. So you can just taste the differences even though it's the same thing. It's very, very weird, but very delicious. And they were all completely different. All cooking over wood fire. This guy starts at 11 a.m. and he doesn't finish until some nights 4 a.m. So it's a big long day. He's serving kgs and kgs of all of his products. That was really cool. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. I know what you're thinking if you're familiar with Varanasi that we missed some things like the RT, the ceremony on the Ganga. We're going to be doing that tomorrow. So stay tuned, subscribe, and uh, hit the bell icon so you're reminded when we post our video. What was your guys' favorite thing we tried today? I loved the malayo and oh, I loved yeah. the rubbery. The rubbery. Yeah, so Bring all it. the sweets. I loved the tomato chat that we just had at Kashi Bandar. Honestly, I'd have to say that hot milk that I just tried, it was so frothy. It was literally like a cappuccino. I loved it. So make sure to check out Swad's YouTube channel. Go Rob's YouTube channel down in the description box. Give them a subscribe and we will see you on another episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.